Have you ever wondered how long it takes to put in an outdoor living space, a backyard makeover renovation project, or better yet, how much does it all cost? In this video, I want to break down an episode from the greatest outdoor living show ever created. It's a little show called Yard Crashers. Now, if you don't know Yard Crashers, this was a show where a host who was typically a general contractor would go into a home improvement store, he'd scout out a couple that had a really bad backyard, and then teams up with a group of people, which is typically the couple's friends and family, and then a couple local landscapers, and they transform these awful backyards into something spectacular. And the kicker is they do all of this in two days. Yeah, two days, crazy. So you and I are gonna watch a couple clips from an episode that is titled Contemporary Cedar Design. And I'm gonna point out five key components that are the reason this backyard is such an incredible transformation. I'm gonna show you the good, and I'm also gonna point out some things that are usually left unsaid by shows like this that you really should know if you are considering an outdoor living space. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. And if you are back, this is gonna be a good one. My name is Bobby Kay. I'm a professional landscape designer and general contractor, and I help people who are struggling to visualize what their landscaping can be. And I do this through clear, easy to follow, and installable landscape design plans. So if you are needing help with that, go check the links below. At the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you how long a project like this would typically take a crew, how much it's going to cost. They never tell you that kind of stuff. And then I'm also going to give you out my pro analysis, what I might do a little bit differently with some of the things that I see that I think will be a problem for them down the road, or at least something that they might get a little bit more mileage out of. Again, this is an incredible show. They do this in like two days. So it's easy to quarterback back here, and just kind of rip people apart. That's not my intention. If you want to see this full episode, go down in the links below, click on it. And I think that they're like $2 for each episode. There's tons of these all over the internet and they're incredibly interesting. They're incredibly valuable and you can get some great ideas. So I highly encourage you to go watch some more of these Yard Crasher episodes because I love them and you're going to get some mileage out of it. So let's get in there. All right, to bring you up to speed, what has happened so far is our general contractor, Chris, has scouted out the couple. He's grabbed them up. He's gone over to their house. They've gone through the backyard, which is a mess of all kinds of different things. They've identified the problems and he's come up with a pretty cool plan with a design firm on how they're gonna transform the yard. So this is the point in the show where they are revealing or unveiling the design and getting everybody pumped up and excited. And I will tell you, it's pretty darn cool. So let's look at the design and I'll give you a couple little tidbits and then we're gonna get into those five components. So here we go. Ooh, wow. Ooh, blowing our minds, Chris. Be so chic. The new contemporary space starts out with one of John and Kyle's biggest needs, a pergola. Under that sits a custom slatted dining table and matching bar, great for mingling. That's okay, good. drink her back here. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love her, by the way. <laughs> you should definitely go watch the full episode. She's funny, and she's the best part of the show. But. What is cool about this is they've got this modern vibe going on. As you can see, they've got a cool custom table, a little sleek little bar, which you don't see very often, not very functional, but still looks cool. And then they've got the slats on the pergola and it's given this cool vibe. And obviously <laughs> they like to party. So this is definitely gonna go in that direction. So if you want a backyard where you can entertain and have people over, this is gonna be a good template for you. Next, concrete pavers flow out to a lounge area with a sectional sofa and architectural privacy walls. Low maintenance plants surround the space to give this yard a pop of color. So you right. can just enjoy. Boom, okay. So they're taking out the lawn completely. No maintenance really, we'll talk about that in a minute. But what I love about this design is you've got the dining area and then you've got a seating area in the back which kind of anchors the backyard. So I can see a lot of times after a meal, you're gonna get done there and you're gonna go to the back corner where uh, you're gonna hang out and lounge and talk with friends and drink. <laughs> in this case, it sounds like they, they get it out and they, they cut loose. Fun neighbors to have, well, depending on if you have little kids, right? So um, I'm liking this. 
and there's a couple more little things to reveal in the design, and then we're gonna get to the five components. Marlon, <laughs> no more yeah. for you back here. No more. The garage is dressed up with a cool metal arbor that continues the cedar slat design. Under that sits an inset bubbling water feature and more lush landscaping throughout. What do you think? I think we it's love amazing. It. Yeah. You guys excited? Yeah. What do you think? What do you think they think? <laughs> they got a horrible backyard. This thing is this is awesome. I love it. I think that it's it's got so much just this, this is my vibe, 100%. If you like modern, contemporary, you like cool little features and elements, that's what we're gonna break down. That's why this thing pops so well. So now you know the design, and I'm gonna fast forward you a little bit. They get in here, they start demoing, they clear everything out, they get all the hodgepodge yuckiness out, and then they get into those different features. And it's scattered throughout the episode so if you want to watch the episode in its entirety like i said go below click on it it's well worth a watch if you like this kind of vibe spend the two bucks and, and go see it it's awesome but uh our first component that we're going to talk about we're going to talk about that dining area and that pergola so our first component that i am a big fan of is the dining area and the pergola and the reason i love this so much is because it's just very trendy it looks really cool they use some different um, pieces of, of material they got cedar they've got metal they they painted it a cool gray they really got into it and made this something that is quite impressive and as soon as you turn the corner you know you're going to be blown away when you see that first bam focal point of the backyard a couple of things that I think you should know when it comes to putting in a pergola is if you have a very sunny backyard that might not be the best fit for you depending on how much you close off the top sun will come through and it can be quite uncomfortable if you don't have it a closed off structure or a shade sail or, or something that that gives you a break from like a hundred degree day. So just keep that in mind. The other thing that I noticed when they were putting together the table, it's a cool looking table. It's really neat. It's got this great shape and I think that they did a great job with the jigsaw. And she's really funny by the way when she starts talking about jigsawing. So again, go watch the video, really cool. But it's not as functional as you would think because when that table curves over, you can only put your legs underneath the long runs. If you tried to hit sit at like the head of the table, your legs are going to hit that and you can't really do anything. So it's only going to be able to seat probably about six people. If you want to have a table like that in the future, make it a little bit longer and maybe you can put eight to 10 people, but think about that. The final thing that I, I, I always preach is if you are going to do a structure above six feet, hence the pergola, hence the attachment on the garage, anything in this backyard, you're gonna to have to pull a permit. There's occasion, different municipalities aren't as harsh, but chances are if you're doing a backyard renovation, you're making a lot of noise, the neighbors are gonna be looking in and they may call somebody because they don't like the noise. And you wanna make sure you have your documentation in order. The, the footing for the piers is gonna to have to be below frost line. Everything is gonna to have to like be structurally sound and it, there's gonna be a couple inspections. So just be aware of that because they never talk about that kind of stuff in these shows. And it's, it's a shame, it's a bummer that you would get out into a project and the inspector comes and he stops it completely. So that's component number one. Very cool dining and pergola area. So component number two is really cool. It's definitely got my vibe, but it comes with a price tag. And you wouldn't think it, you're like, what do you mean, it's just concrete? Well. There's labor involved with all of those transition slabs, those concrete slabs. You gotta put together all the forms, you gotta space them out, you gotta make sure your base is all perfectly together. Then you got a concrete truck with the big hose that comes in and fills them in and you got the guy on the clock and the cleaning fee. The point is, there are other ways that you could create this transition. There are products that are big, overextended pavers that could have been put there instead of the poured concrete. Now I know they've got some big pieces there and that may not be doable, but I want you to think about that because you're gonna pay a little bit more for that look and maybe that's perfect for you. Maybe that's exactly what you want. The other thing I want you to think about is, yes, they took out the lawn, cool. Don't have to cut the grass anymore, that's great. But if you don't properly 
compact everything and make sure that you've prepped all the beds and you put a nice weed barrier down, you, you know, put side staples in to really get it tacked down and it's not gonna move, weeds could come up. And you would hate to take out all this grass and then, you know, August comes after a big rain and it's 100 degrees and then just weeds go woof everywhere. So think about preparation and making sure that you aren't taking everything out just so that you're weeding on the weekends. Nobody wants to do that. Let's go on to our third component. Believe it or not, one of the coolest components in this backyard is by the garage. You would never guess that, but I loved it. I loved how they pulled the pergola design and they transferred it over to jazzing up the side of the garage so you don't see it. They painted it and then they did all the cedar. Here are a couple things that they don't talk about in the show that I want you to know is they did an industrial look. They've got these uh, square tubings which go up in L and they're all welded together. So you have all that steel that you're buying, you're paying a welder more than likely, and then you're tacking that to the garage. Okay, it's doable, and then you're facing it. But you gotta think about how deep those tubes are gonna have to go down into the ground because you probably wanna anchor them in concrete and not just to the wall of the garage. Tapcon screws are probably going to hold it, but I'm a little kind of over the top. I always am doing a little extra and making sure something is going to be solid as a rock. You know what? Tapcon screws are probably going to do it. Ignore that. The point is, there are some extra steps involved when you do metal and wood. The design element, very, very cool. Looks great. Covers up the garage. But as far as labor, more material, and expenses, it could get a little pricey. So just consider that if you are going to put something up against there, okay? Do me a favor, if you are getting value out of this video, smash the like button, click the like button. It helps other people find this video and it lets me know that you are enjoying it and gives me the kind of shot in the arm to make more of these because this is really fun. I'm loving doing this and, and going over this. So if you like that, let's hit it up. Now let's get into number four. So the fourth and probably the coolest component of this entire backyard renovation is the part that anchors everything. You've got this beautiful custom the seating wall and it's a raised planter in the back and they made all of this out of cinder blocks gave it a really cool concrete maybe a stucco kind of finish and then filled it up and put some plants in some of the things they don't tell you that I think would make a world of difference when building something like this in your yard if you're considering this is do this first I know that they're doing this in two days and they're strapped for time and they're running all over the place and they don't have that luxury but you'll see that they started filling up the planter after it was built, by the way, my God. Like, when you build the rows, fill it up as you go so you're not shoveling wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow over. The reason they're doing wheelbarrow is because they poured all of those concrete slabs first and they can't get any equipment over there. How much easier would it have been to get a dingo, which is like a little skid loader with a bucket, scoop it up and then just dump it over the side and not have to do all that by hand. This poor guy who put all this stuff in probably spent hours just filling up the planter. So that would be the first thing I would say. Second thing is he gives a really great tip about splitting the plants, which is, is, is spot on. If you can save money, by not buying a bunch of plants, thinking you have to put them in at the same size. There are certain plants, grasses, the things that he puts in where you can split them and make it into almost four different plants. And that is a really great tip. And we do that a lot on the designs and the installs that we do. One thing that I think could have made it a little bit better is they just kind of slap some furniture up against there. Obviously, because of the timing, I get it. But how cool would it have been to do a floating bench there versus just kind of the furniture which blends in with the color altogether? A floating bench of cedar, okay? So that industrial steel that you saw in the garage, what you would do is put those up and through the cinder blocks, tap them in with tap cons, and then you would build a cedar bench on top of there. I think that would take it to the next level. Your eye would be drawn to there even more. And unfortunately, they just put a little dining table there. Um, my God, is that the spot for a fire pit or what? So another thing I would totally do. Let's go on to number five. So I've been a big fan of this design the whole way through. I've been very supportive, but I tell you, I know it was because of timing. It had to be. But man, did they miss the mark with the water feature. It looks like they literally just took a blue tub and threw it in. And oh man, such a missed opportunity. 
here's what I would have done. <laughs> I would have considered that this tub is going to more than likely start to build up some algae or other things. It's a mosquito haven. It ain't gonna work long term. They could have put a bubbling urn there. They could have put a bubbling boulder. If they really wanted to go crazy on the garage instead of doing that trellis, that industrial thing, how about a really cool spot to face in front of the garage and have a water wall? There's killing two birds with one stone. You got a water wall, which covers the garage and is your water component. And like I said, they missed out on the fire pit. I would have put that over in the corner so you'd have fire and water. So the water feature is the only thing that I was a little disappointed with with the entire design. But other than that, it has got some pretty darn cool components. Now here's the thing we're gonna talk about now. How long would this typically take a company? How much would it cost? And what are some of my pro tips that I would give you and tweaks that I would do to this design that I think would take it to the next level. Here we go. So I'm gonna give this to you rapid fire. We would typically put a crew of three to four guys on it. I think that's standard for most companies going out and tackling a backyard renovation project. Sometimes you get up to four to six and really put some guys on there, but you start walking all over each other. If my company was installing this project, it would more than likely take, because of all the components and planning and blah, 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 I'd say three to four weeks, three to four weeks. So that right there gives you an idea of how much preparing they had to do before they got on site. But it also, you know, hats off to these guys. They busted their butts and put something in that is spectacular in two days. Two days they did all this. It's incredible. And that's what you get from Yard Crashers. Every single one of these episodes, they do these in two days. And it's really impressive. And I'm a huge fan of it. And I love the show. And I think that it is, is blown up the outdoor living industry because it's given people like yourself opportunity to see what their spaces can be. Backyard's now an extension of the home because of this show. So we gotta give our props. Um, how much would this cost? Of what I've heard, I think these are free for the, the homeowners, the couples that they select. And it's more or less the time that all the people put in and maybe the network supplies all the material costs. Uh, but the couple like wins the lottery basically, the landscape lottery they call it. If I was installing this project myself, labor, material, everything else, this project is probably gonna land in that 25 to 30 range would be my estimate. And the reason it's it's not too bad is simply because they took out a lot of the hardscaping by doing the rock. The rock was a huge saver. That is a way that you can create an awesome outdoor space and not buy a bunch of pavers, have a bunch of hardscape materials and this and that. Then again, we do have the raised planter. It might get closer to 30 to 35. Just saying, it's doable. Most people with saving and really putting together a good plan can afford this. And they went from absolutely nothing to something beautiful that they're gonna enjoy forever. And they're gonna have their friends over a lot. And they're so lucky to have this, this outdoor space for free. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. It's an amazing thing. Some of the things that I would have done a little bit different as a designer is, I talked about the floating bench in the back. If you've got a little bit more money, that is a really cool component to do. Definitely put a fire pit in the back. The water feature is subpar for everything else that they put their heart and soul into. I would get something much cooler. And then as far as the slabs that were poured for the backyard, I think they're really neat, but um, I don't think it's a high probability that most people are gonna sign off on that because of the costs associated. So I think doing some bigger pavers as the stepping stones, and then having a paver area where the fire pit should be, would be much more functional and get a lot more value out of it. I know that you can't walk on that rock with no shoes on, but you sure can step on stepping stones onto a paver and be a little bit more comfortable in your backyard. So these are just some of the little designer things that I would do a little bit differently on top of everything else I mentioned. But it's pretty easy to sit behind a computer screen 
and just point out a bunch of stuff. I don't think that's really fair. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go watch this video. This is of something that we've installed and I wanna get your honest feedback and leave a comment on there of things that you liked and that you didn't like because um, these guys busted their butt and anybody can sit behind a computer and talk it up. But I wanted to give you a lot of cool tips to help you along the way. So I hope I did that. If you like it, smash it up. This is Bobby K saying creation is everything. So go out, create. See you on the next video.